Okay, so we're sitting here on this lovely Thursday. Uh, myself, Tracy Everman, Senior Mortgage Banker, Flat Branch Home Loans, and I am with the awesome Terry Peterson uh, with more realtors. And um, today we're going to have a very candid conversation on a topic that people don't really like to talk about a lot. Right, Terry? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, that death and taxes are two things that uh, no one wants to talk about. Those are the two things in life that are certain, death and taxes. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so Terry Peterson um, comes to us by way of many, many, almost 40 years in the finance industry, uh, specifically mortgage and as well, and the real estate industry. And you've been practicing real estate for almost 18 years. Um, and you are a certified probate expert. Correct. Uh, so, you know, we'll just dive right in. I got some questions for you, and I know that this will help the audience a lot um, because this is just something that affects people. You know, it's the worst part of life, losing a loved one. And I mean, I've lost both of my parents. And so with each of their passing, I learned a lot and unfortunately did right. not avoid probate with my dad. I shared that story with you. Yeah. Um, but it's like, you know, we, the, you know, we, uh, when we lose our loved ones, we're there to pick up all the pieces and kind of clean up all the mess of this entire beautiful life that they lived. So, and um, real estate is certainly part of that. So, right. um, you know, as a certified probate expert and a realtor, like, what are your first thoughts when you know that a family is dealing with the loss of a loved one like what is the first thing that you can help you know the grieving is starting and all that i'm gonna let right, you go right no i understand and, and uh like you tracy i i as well have been touched by the in this situation 12 years ago i lost uh, my wife to breast cancer and more recently lost my father so it's something that like you i've had experience with uh it's real and uh you know and that's part of the reason frankly that i that i've kind of twisted my business towards uh, the probate business and senior senior business. And uh, one thing that, you know, that I thought about and, and one thing I was very appreciative of as I was going through the process is the support system to support the family. You know, yeah. is there a faith, you know, are, are they involved in a faith-based group or is there a community that they're involved in that that reaches out and supports people, and and frankly, how close is the family? You know, is the in you know is the per, is the individual, you know, living here in St. Louis all by themselves, or do they have aunts, uncles, everybody around that you know they can lean on and help each other out? Yeah, so, flying you know, solo. That's yeah. that's got to yeah. be rough. Support system it, is huge. Right, right. But you know, once you kind of get past that initial grieving process as you mentioned you know unfortunately there are a few things that need to be done fairly quickly um you know you think about well one just notifying friends and family um extended family and, and friends and so forth uh two is you know depending on the individual were they employed and the, you know their employer needs to be notified and and so forth um you know it, but from a moving forward standpoint, one of the things that's kind of overlooked is um, is getting mail forwarded from the decedent's property to whomever's in charge, the personal yeah. representative. You know, that's one of the, the key things in the whole probate process is identifying assets and debts. I mean, that's part of the, of the job of the personal representative and getting that mail and as well, hopefully during if there was notice during the process, getting access to social media and, and internet accounts and things like that. But just having the mail forwarded is is a key function that people just don't think about. And yeah. uh, I, I, I know I've talked with uh, many uh, probate attorneys and, you know, they one of the first things they tell their clients is to get the mail forwarded. You know, mm -hmm. beyond that, you know, there's a t slew of other things arranging for funerals and various other things. But those are the basic uh, things that you, you kind of just get started with and uh, and begin moving forward in that process. 
Yeah. And I mean, I know you've helped so many families through this process and um, for anybody who wants to reach out to you, obviously, I'm sure you have like checklists of here's the first 10 things that you need to do. And it's things that we wouldn't. Oh, there we go. Backwards and forwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's things that that we don't think about. Like I remember you and I had coffee and you said they've got to change the locks on the house. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah as a matter of fact, with as it, as it relates to, to real estate itself, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, when when a personal representative is, is uh, accepts a responsibility for the estate, um, you know, there's a fiduciary responsibility that goes with that. And it's very serious. I mean, it's it is. I mean, there are there are legal um, responsibilities and accountabilities. And, and unfortunately, there's a downside to it if you don't do a good job of managing the estate. But, you know. From a fiduciary standpoint, one of the first things that comes up is securing the assets, and yeah. and that's it, not just real estate, but but you know all the assets of the estate, and along those lines are things uh, you know personal property within within the real estate, you know what collections or valuables they may have and so forth, and <clears throat> while you don't think about it, you never know who grandma or grandpa or uncle or brother or whomever, who they may have given a key to, to the property. Um, and who actually within the family has keys to the property. And while you don't want to think about it, you know, your job is to secure those assets. And we don't need assets just walking out of the house because uncle Joe said I could have this, or mom said I could have this, or grandpa said I could have this. Or That's the house not, cleaner that came yeah, once the, a month has a key. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So so it's really important to secure the property. And, and the first thing to do along those lines is rekeying the property so that nobody had, can get access to the property without you knowing about it. You know, the other thing about securing the property and securing the assets is ensuring that, you know, the mortgage and utilities continue to get paid. Those, those are things that need to continue happening throughout the probate process is, is staying current on those, on the mortgage and utilities. You know, when you think about the time of year we're in now, heading into the end October and pretty soon it's going to be cold is, you know, is the house vacant? If, if the house is vacant, well, you should probably think, okay, I need, you know, I need to winterize the house. Um, turn off the water. Um, yeah, last you know, thing you want to deal with is a busted pipe in the house. Exactly. Because exactly. here in St. Louis, you know, it got to 10 below zero. Well, yeah. And before you know it, you've got an indoor swimming pool in the basement, you know, because. And then, the, and then what's the value the of, of, what's the value of the asset? You right. know, especially if your loved one wants to leave behind somewhat of a legacy for their family, you know, a piece of real right. estate or whatever else they may have um, gotten in their lifetime. Well, yeah, I mean, for most most families, about generally about 80% of the value of the estate is actually in the real estate. So, yeah. you know, uh, making certain that the house is taken care of. And again, that's part of the fiduciary responsibility that you take on as a personal representative. You can actually be personally liable for mismanagement of the estate. So it's very important to, to get that done. The other thing that you know, people don't think about is, and you're, you're seeing it more prevalently and predominantly in the news is squatters, Yeah. you know, and I personally have, have shown up at a property to show a listing to a client in a house that had squatters that the yeah. owners didn't know anything about. So I've heard one, that time and time again, what a scary oh yeah. situation because yeah, you don't yeah. know who that person could be. Exactly. And so one of the things that you should do along those lines, again, related to the real estate, is posting a no trespassing sign. On, this is on a vacant property. Posting a no, press, no trespassing sign and notifying the local police precinct that the property is vacant and ask them to, uh, you know, increase the amount of drive-bys they do and to make note if there's lights on in the house and those sorts of things. They need to be aware of that and can help you identify it. It's a whole lot easier to get somebody out of the house 
when you've taken those steps than it is to show up a month later after they've transferred utilities into their name and now they have frankly tenant tenant rights as a wow. store. So getting somebody it, evicted can be a real, real nightmare. And you know, we've read stories about that in the news. So it goes it goes without saying that being in the right hands of the professionals that are advising you, especially during this emotional time, you know, it's not just anybody that can give you all these tips. I mean, I've been in, in mortgage for 22 years. I dealt with probate with my dad, as I've shared with you, I was the personal representative. Nobody shared this with me, you know? Right. And so it, it's just, it's invaluable um, what you're sharing here. Now going, right. going further into the people that can help you, um, you know, manage probate. If you find yourself in that situation, um, First of all, I mean, let me, I, I just want to touch on again, anybody watching here, it, people hear the term probate. I think a lot of people don't know exactly what it means. And so real quick, my simple definition, I like to break things down and keep it simple as those, those who know me know I like to do that. So probate is basically when you lose a loved one in their lifetime, they've accumulated stuff. Okay. Whether that's a piece of real estate, cars, uh, money, assets. It could be a whole bunch or it could be a not very much. And what happens is if you don't have a legal plan in place with an attorney, meaning will, estate, trust, I always tell everybody, if you don't have a plan, the, the courts do, and that is called probate. Right. So, you know, so if you were to do things the proper way, and these conversations come up as you and I are helping people buy homes, you know, that is the time to really take inventory of, oh my gosh, I've I've got things that will need to be dealt with in the future, you know, meaning your will is here's here's what I want done. Your estate is here's all the stuff that I have. And then the trust is here's how I want it done. Right. And you appoint a trustee, which is obviously somebody you trust, you know, but when that's not the case, that's when we see ourselves in this probate situation and it, it definitely becomes a legal matter. So how, how do you find, like, what is your best advice on finding a probate attorney and like what qualifications should somebody be looking for when they bring that person into this situation? Right. Right. Well, and I, and I'm glad you went through that, uh, that, that process there. A lot of people are under the impression that if they have a will, it's all taken care of. You know, and that is not the case. A will has to be probated through the courts. Um, the only way to avoid probate is, as you said, with a trust, a will, and estate plan. And, and more importantly, that that estate plan, the trust, is fully funded. Uh, because if there are assets that are outside of that trust, they have to be probated. So, you know, it, it's real important that as people you know, that go to the trouble of setting up a trust, that they judiciously move their assets in and out as appropriate so that it's fully funded. So, but, you know, getting back to your question about, um, you know, the, the, the thing that, you know, there are attorneys that specialize in probate, probate attorneys. And just like if you're working with a mortgage person or a realtor or CPA, um, Working with someone that specializes in that field is very important. You know, yeah. you, you can imagine trying to do a mortgage with someone that just got in the business and doesn't know anything about it and ha having them guide you through that process. It just doesn't, it, it just <laughs> is not a good idea. So, you know, working with an attorney that specializes in probate is real important. Specializes, what does that mean? Well, you know, I, in my mind, it's somebody that that's that's doing a good number of probates a year. Um, is it sure. one a month, two a month, three a month? You know, I track probates, every probate that's filed in St. Louis, Jefferson County, St. Charles County, and I know who's doing the business in in the marketplace. And as a result, we're, we're able to provide. And, and we work with most of those people and we're able to provide good referrals to clients that want to reach out to us. But by the same token, what are you, you know, what are you looking for? And, and I should say that in the state of Missouri, you are required to have a probate attorney represent the personal representative 
in the court. Uh, with with a small provision for a small estate of less than forty thousand dollars, which doesn't require an attorney, but I'm gonna I will always recommend that you hire an attorney even in that situation. Yeah. So you know, so the things that you need, you know, how do you find those attorneys? Obviously, you know, we can provide great referrals, but you know, you can Google probate attorneys online. You can get references from friends or referrals from you know, various places, maybe your CPA or financial planner knows someone. But, you know, the questions that I would have is how many cases have they been involved in in the last six months? Right. If it's, if it's one or none, you know, I I would I would look, look the other look way. Look elsewhere. Well, yeah. and, and then you've got a huge network of probate attorneys that you've right. worked with regularly. Right. So right. certainly right. someone could trust your recommendation. Yeah. And, you know, the you know, do, you know, wh- how do they work? Do they have a team that assists them or is it them alone? Again, you know, this, you know, probate it, it can, can take a long time. And if you're working with an individual attorney working on his own, um, you know, it's not like having an, a team. I know Tracy, you as a, as a uh, loan officer have su- a support staff that help you out and Absolutely. enable you do frankly these kinds of things because they're in the background making deals happen can't Uh, do it without the team that's for sure (laughs) exactly and an attorney is the same way you know do they you know ask them do you return phone calls promptly how quickly can i expect you to respond to me you know does your firm handle the filing of tax returns for the decedent as well as the estate Um, or do you have contacts or a cpa on your team that does that for you you know, those types of things. Basically, you know, is the attorney a good communicator and do they respect you? I mean, you'll get the feel when you sit down with someone, whether this is a person with compassion or this is, you know, somebody that I may not want to work with. Or I'm just a number, you know, somewhere on their list. Yeah. 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 I was going to ask you that. How, how long, what, like, what's the time frame that probate could take? I mean, I shared with you, my my dad when he passed and we and I was the personal representative he didn't have very much but it still took almost 18 months and I had a pile of mail that big right for not a lot right so right. Yeah, I think it's, long, you know in long term yeah no I think it's uh you know kind of highlighting the process to give people a and you know just a, a 3,000 foot view of of the process is you know is basically you need to retain the attorney who then files the paperwork for the personal representative to be appointed by the court. Right. You know, once that's done, you know, death certificates and uh, wills will be submitted to the court. And during that, that process, the personal representative has to establish an inventory of assets and valuation of those assets. They also have to work with the attorney in identifying any creditors. Um, The attorney will post at the beginning of the process, will post in all the appropriate legal places, notice to creditors, and they have six months to file a claim against the estate. So once that six months is up, then hopefully the work is, as you found out, is being done by the personal representative to establish that the inventory uh, the debts are being um, are being gathered and understand what the debt is. And then once you get approval from the court, you know, those uh, debts are paid off and money is distributed uh, to the family uh, or, or the heirs, as it were. So, you know, that process is at a minimum six months because that's what credit, how long it takes. You have to provide for creditors to make a claim against the estate. Now, if it's a small estate and it's not very complicated and so forth, sometimes that can happen within a few months of that six month time frame. But most of the time people are looking at probably 12 to 18 months before the estate is settled. And you know, some of that time frame can can be related to, you know, how um, uh, the time the time that the personal representative is able to give to the estate to get it done when you think about it and you know it's almost like a full time job. Oh, it so, was. I mean, I'm a working I'm a working mom. I'm an executive. 
running my day-to-day business, my day-to-day life with the family and then throwing that on top of it. You know, I just, I mean, but it was, it was my duty. You know, I needed to do that for my dad and for the family and all of that. Absolutely. So, but, but as well, you know, if it, it also can depend on, you know, whether there's any challenges to the estate by some heirs, you could wind up in litigation, which could, you know, so there's a lot of, of moving parts and I always, in, in, in counseling with personal representatives, I always tell them to communicate with the heirs. Let them know what's going on. Don't yeah. go a month without talking to someone. As a matter of fact, here at, uh, at uh, you know, our, our St. Louis Family Resources, more realtors, uh, we actually provide access to, for our clients, to an estate software calls, uh, that called Estate Exec, which allows you to provide access to the activities that you have as a personal representative to the heirs, to the attorneys, to the CPAs. Just it to keep everybody a, on the same page, yeah. right? And they, and they know what you're doing. They can see what you're doing. And it actually provides at the end a reporting that's, that's fantastic to give to, again, the attorney, the CPAs, and so forth that they can work off of to do their jobs. And the so, cost of that is like what, a hundred bucks? I think you told me. Well, it's free to our clients, but yes, oh. it costs us about a hundred dollars. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's worth it to document everything just oh, so yeah. everything's in black and white. It, Cause you and I, you know, and I know in the real estate world, we've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly when there's multiple family members involved in the sale right. of a piece of real estate, you know? So that's, that's really important, which leads me to, can you sell a piece of real estate while you're in the probate process? Uh, the answer to that is yes. The properties can be sold while in probate. And in fact, many times it's necessary to sell the real estate to settle the, de- the debts of the estate and or distribute the assets to the heirs. You know, it's if, if there's multiple heirs, but most of the value is in the real estate, you know, how are they going to go about separate, you know, sorting that out? And, and so many times the, you know, the real estate does have to be sold. And, you know, what's important to understand about that is selling real estate that is in a, that is wrapped up in a probate is a unique situation. There are things and and documents that need to be generated and created for the court and for the title company in order to actually sell that real estate. So, you know, working with an experienced realtor, just like a, a, an attorney, a, a CPA, a, a, a loan officer, working with a an experienced realtor that understands the probate process, um, is experienced in working with attorneys alongside of attorneys and helping guide the personal representative, I think is very important. You know, um, I kind of look at it this way. Um, as a personal representative, when you hire that attorney or retain that attorney to represent you, you're partnering with that attorney to work you with, to help you work through the legal side of the probate. I like to think that our 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 role here at St. Louis Family Resources is to partner with the personal representative and help them work through the physical asset side of the of the estate. You know, yeah. we open our Rolodex up to service providers, vetted contractors, people that they're going to need in managing the and working through the physical side of, of the of the estate, the physical asset side of the estate. So we like to think that we marry a lot up with them and can ha- frankly help help them eliminate a whole lot of stress. Yeah. Uh, you know, because we know the person that can can value uh, uh, you know collectibles, coins and and baseball or cards, jewelry or baseball cards or, or and you know because so, you don't have just the house to sell you've right. got all the stuff inside of the house exactly to and, sell and, yeah and and working with the state you know with the state sales um you know who buys cars who does this that and the other so so i like to think that the value that we bring really is to help helping that personal representative eliminate a whole lot of stress and uh, but as well provide them some good guidance and, and help them uh, in various areas of the estate, not only the real estate, but but 
all really all the physical assets involved in the estate. So right, right. Well, uh, it, you being the expert that you are in this matter of probate and real estate, you've obviously got an amazing network of people, you know, that just help during one of the more emotional times in your life. You know, it's Absolutely. like you're dealing with a significant loss. Um, the last thing you need is to work with someone who is a professional, but really doesn't know what they're doing. So Terry, you bring a tremendous amount of value to the families that are dealing with these matters. And, um, obviously anybody out there, uh, you know, in the audience watching this, feel free to reach out to Terry or myself, if you have any questions, but specifically in the, in the world of probate, real estate, loss of loved ones, Terry, you're, you're probably the foremost expert that I've met in my entire career that can handle these matters and really help these families. So thanks so um, much. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah right. I appreciate your time today. I, I hope everybody out there in the web sphere uh, finds this valuable and um, we'll do another one of these here real soon. Okay. Absolutely. Take All care. All right. Thanks, Terry. Bye-bye. Goodbye.